Namashivaya and welcome to Yin Yoga. And because we are all kind of homeward bound right now, I'm attempting to teach this Yin Yoga class with only a block. So if you have a block at home, fantastic. Otherwise, maybe grab a copy of War and Peace or whatever it is you've got that's a nice, thick book that's manageable. So grab your prop and find your way onto your sticky mat and take child's pose, balasana. I've enjoyed beginning my practice lately and assisting others in beginning their practice with child's pose as a deep bow to what life is presenting, a deep bow to the body, the heart, the mind, a gesture of humility, a gesture of surrender to all that's so. Just surrendering to the moment and allowing the universe to unfold as it is without arm wrestling with reality. It is what it is, people. Just take a bow and a deep breath. So just a last few moments in child's pose to settle in to that spirit of surrender. Dropping in to the arena of humility. And then perhaps from this place, allowing an intention to rise to the surface. Why are you on the sticky mat right here, right now? Inhaling your intentions to each and every cell. Exhaling, may it be so. Staying soft and surrendered throughout our practice as the palms come up underneath the shoulders and we slowly begin to post off of our points of contact, rolling up bone by bone, vertebra by vertebra. Shoulders up, back and down. Chin comes parallel to the floor. Head's the last to rise. A moment at the top to take a breath. Exhaling. And then begin working your way into a comfortable seated posture, which may be into Sukhasana, easy pose. And this is when you may consider sitting up on your block. Or, if you like Virasana, some of you know the hero's pose. Now having a seat in Virasana with the block up underneath you for support. So find whatever it is that's most comfortable and accessible to you. And just arrive. And as you arrive, once again, the head bows. And the two palms press. Uniting self to self, self to spirit, and taking a moment to offer our sankalpa up and out on the wind of an ohm. Empty to fill. Savitu Varenyam Bargo Devasya Dimahi Yohyona Prachodaya Om Shanti 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 The Gayatri Mantra A blessing and thanks of Mother Earth and the beauty that surrounds for being our backdrop here today. And so the eyes softly blink open. And from here, you're just going to come in whatever way is easiest for you to bring your right arm to the head of your sticky mat in a way that takes your palm down 
and squares off the heel of your hand with the head of your mat. And so you can have as much weight in your left hand if you need to, if you need to. Take that right shoulder away from the ear. Right shoulder away from the ear, right armpit moving down towards the waist. And then you're just leaning into that right hand with only as much as enthusiasm as the carpal tunnel will allow. Right? And you want to make sure that the wrist is square with the head of your mat. So we're a little bit cattywampus here, don't follow our example on that component. But find the head of your mat. And then you decide how much can you lean in or how much do you need to back off. So we're not efforting, we're just allowing gravity to do her thing here. That's the beauty of yin yoga. You don't muscle your way into yin yoga. You just, as best you can, use the musculature to arrive at the approximation of the shape and then surrender. So soft shoulders, soft heart, soft jaw. And imagine you could put two little nostrils there on the wrist and breathe from your wrist. And for some of you, this may not be too difficult. This may not be too sensational. In which case, you can just slowly begin to bend your right elbow straight back. Don't let it come inward or outward, just straight back. I like to put my left hand on top of the right hand for stability and ever so slightly create a little bit of space between the wrist and the floor. And then that's oftentimes too juicy. You know, those who spend a lot of time at a keyboard, it's, it's a bit much. So keep it honest, stay relaxed, and last few breaths into carpal tunnel. There's been a lot of gripping lately, right? So we're going to see if we can loosen the connective tissue that engages the grip. All right, if you've picked your wrist bone up at all from the floor, just slowly lower it back down. Use your left hand on the floor for support. As you slowly pick your right hand up, Om Namah Shivaya, and turn it over. Back side of the hand to the floor now. Once again, squaring the wrist off at the head of the mat. This can be super juicy. Slowly work on eliminating the bend in the elbow. Back side of the hand on the floor. Just work in that wrist bone towards the floor very gently. Don't force anything. We practice as our own best friend. Just let your hand be soft your shoulder relaxed and your arm fully extended if possible. And then just bow your head and breathe into your sensations. Just find a great softening everywhere that you can. And you just allow the shoulder to push the wrist down into the floor. And just allow your weight to do it, not the muscles. Last few breaths here, really breathing from that carpal tunnel, opening up the wrist. And then slowly just begin to back off. Just releasing the hand. Ay, ay, ay. And then pause at the top, let your arms hang empty out of the shoulders and see if you don't feel like your right arm is hanging a little bit lower than your left, right? Deep breath in. Deeper breath out. All right, let's loosen the grip. Second side. So we're gonna switch over. Take the palm of the left hand to the sticky mat. And you're gonna square off the wrist with the head of the mat. So you've got the palm of the hand. Pick up. So, with the heel of the hand flush with the head of the mat, fingers spread open, trying not to hyperextend into the elbow. So if you notice that you're settling into the back of the joint, just give a gentle bend in the elbow, pull the shoulder back, pull the armpit down. Yeah. So there's a lot of hypermobility in the elbows. Just feel if that is happening. That hypermobility creates instability. All right, so. We want to skirt away from that as best we can. And then I would just keep working the weight of the wrist down into the floor from dropping the shoulder as opposed to, once again, any effort. And just breathe. 
breathe from your wrist, soft tongue, soft jaw, soft shoulders, just breathing into that juicy connective tissue, the pathway through which our energy flows, our chi, our prana. Last few breaths, see if your body isn't getting enough sensation. Now because this body tends to hyperextend, I would recommend just staying here. But if you don't, and, and you're welcome to explore, just give a gentle bend to the elbow and see if you go deeper into the bend of the elbow, how that feels on a hypermobile joint. And then you decide, you know, if that feels good and safe and medicinal, then explore it. But continue to be your own greatest advocate. Last few breaths, just opening up where the hand meets the arm, clearing traffic with your breath. And then slowly release the heel of the hand back down to the earth if you haven't already. And then use your points of contact to just back off, just slowly back off. Yeah. I just release straight back and then turn that hand over yeah. and square off the head of the wrist with the head of the mat and then once again shoulders moving away from the body armpits moving down towards the waist that top left quadrant of the chest is open and you're just allowing your weight to drop down into a fully extended arm again being mindful of hypermobility Breathing into the nostrils of the left wrist. Generous with the breath. Giving thanks for all these hands have done. All the movements, all the giving, all the receiving. And then just begin to back off. arms hang empty out of the shoulder for a breath and then come back into a comfortable seated posture perhaps onto your bolster your zafu your block and as you arrive in your seated posture bring the backs of your hands to press Shoulders down, elbows down, and wrist perhaps in line with the elbows. Heart high, and then you decide however much pressure you want to put in the backs of these hands meeting one another in this type of inverted prayer position. And then see, as you lower your shoulders and lower your elbows and bring your elbows in closer to your body, and drop your shoulders down and bring your hands in. Drop your hands down a little bit, yeah. And then continue to press the entire back side of the hand as best you can and feel your way. Once again, back into the back side of the wrist. And then we're gonna slowly start to do this mudra of circling the wrist bone. So drawing it towards the body, fingers towards the body, up towards the face, and then out into the world, rolling the wrist bone all the while. And just continue, rolling your wrist bone, keeping that wrist bone connected, just exploring the mobility of this joint. Yeah. And then reverse the direction. Draw it into you, and then down and away from you. And then the next time your palms are pressing and you're in prayer position, once again, take your shoulders down, take your elbows down, palms in traditional prayer position, 
and let those hands come in a way that has the roots of the fingers pressing into one another a little bit and getting you back into carpal tunnel. Heart high, shoulders low. And then release your arms straight out in front of you. Straight out in front of you, palms face down. Arms parallel to the floor, shoulder height. And then draw your fingertips together. And draw your fingertips towards your armpits. And then breathe once again into those nostrils at carpal tunnel. We've got this theme today of getting into the connective tissue that loosens the grip, folks. We're loosening the grip today. And then bring your palms back parallel to the floor and spread your fingers apart as wide as you can. Shoulders down, armpits down, sternum high, collarbones in a wide smile. And then draw your fingers back towards your face, reach out through the heels of your hands. As if you were pushing a wall in front of you. Energy really coming out through the underside of the wrist. Fingers drawing back towards the top of the shoulders. Shoulders down, armpits down, and we breathe, and we breathe, and we breathe. And then we push the walls beyond us away and go wide rim to rim. Shoulders down, arms shoulder height. Drawing your fingers back towards your ears. Reaching out through the heels of your hands. Bring your fingers together and open your fingers up. And fan your fingers and close your fingers. And fan your fingers and close your fingers. Fan and close and fan and close. Fan your fingers, fan your fingers, fan them, fan them, fan them. And then rotate your palms towards the wall in front of you. And bring your elbows into your back pockets, making the letter W with your arms. Elbows into your back pockets. So then you decide from this letter W, how tight is it, how wide is it, how close to your shoulders do your hands come and how far from your shoulders do your hands go. Find the perfect distance for you that really allows you to spread open the space across your collarbones from shoulder head to shoulder head. Feel that opening up. Perhaps close your eyes and feel that connective tissue. Feel that space all around the collarbones and where the collarbones meet the sternum. Feel whatever gripping there is around the heart. Whatever grip the shoulders have on these burdens we're carrying. Just let it all go. Use your breath. Each exhalation, soften. Soften. Loosen the grip. Last little bit. Let those hands go back and back and back. Keep your elbows where they are. Just take the hands back. Yeah. And then reach wide rim to rim and float your fingers down towards the floor. Fingertips just gently resting back behind you on the floor. Yeah. Pause there for a few breaths, just feeling your ever-expansive heart. The awareness of the ever-expansive heart. And then you're going to begin to feel your chin parallel to the floor. Head in line with the rest of the spine and take your right ear to your right shoulder. And as your right ear drops to your left sho right shoulder, right ear to right shoulder, drop your right shoulder a little bit further. Yeah, beautiful. Left shoulder a little bit further. Yeah. And then see what it's like to bring your right arm overhead, bending your right elbow and letting your right hand rest along the edge of your skull in a way that just assists you in pulling that skull ever so slightly a little bit more over to the side. So you just want a gentle grip and you want to find where it works and then make sure that the head is in line with the rest of the spine as you do it. There's a tendency to fall forward. Continue to root your shoulder blades onto your back body. little bit of just dropping those shoulders. Keep those shoulders low. 
and then let your right hand slide across your head and find your right ear. And as your right hand slides across the top of your head and finds your right ear, you can gently lift your head to center. Pause at center for a clearing breath. Release the arms. Relax. Loosen the grip. Loosen the grip. <laughs> and then shoulders down, collarbones in a wide smile, left ear to left shoulder. Yeah. Drop both shoulders. Drop them. Drop them. Shoulders don't make good earrings. Now anchor, anchor your shoulder blades to your spine. Yeah. Keep anchoring your shoulder blades to your spine and feel your sternum spreading. And then from here you're going to take the left arm up and overhead and look for the right ear with the left hand and give a gentle assist. All the while dropping both shoulders and if you can, as you drop both shoulders, see if that right arm can come out and go low, reach long and low in a way that spreads the top right quadrant of the chest. And then be sure you're dropping that left shoulder as well. And then the hand that's holding the head is just there to gently assist. You don't even have to really pull so much. Just a little bit of, of weight, a little bit of encouragement, but we never bully the body, right? Be sweet. And then breathe into the connective tissue from the right shoulder to the right ear. Relaxing the left shoulder all the while. Relaxing everything that you can. And just letting gravity and the gentle weight of your assist do everything here. Generous with the breath. Very generous with the breath. Always generous to the body with the breath. Last little bit of lifting your sternum, dropping your shoulder blades, and then let your hand slide over the top of your head, find your left ear, just to push your skull to center, not using your neck muscles, and then release your left arm. Deep breath in, deeper breath out. And just pause and notice how does it feel from your fingers to your wrists to your shoulders to your ears and then as you're ready you'll begin to lay down and feel your way into pentacle pose as you lay down and feel your way into pentacle pose you're going to just reach out through the four corners of your mat Fingers out through the top two corners, toes out through the bottom two corners, and be very active in this for a moment. I mean, really wiggle and writhe. Climb out of yourself. Your fingers climb out of your wrists. Your hands climb out of your arms. Point through your toes, point through your fingers. Lengthen, 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 and then soften. And as you soften, release, surrender, if you have the good fortune of practicing outside, everything that's landing on you is benign. You are safe. Just being one with your surroundings. I totally encourage you practicing outdoors right now, wherever, whenever you can, safely. All right. And then from here, just slowly begin to hug your knees into your chest. You can keep your head down and give yourself a hug so we don't bring the neck muscles back into it. A little bit of love on the low back. Nice. And then float your legs to tabletop. Arms out like wings. Arms straight out like wings. Take your shoulder blades back down into your back pockets. Yeah. And then allow both legs to fall over to the right. And you decide where the knees want to land today. How high up they are, how low down they are. The further up your knees come to your right elbow, the more kind it may be on your low back. So this isn't as much about the SI joint today like it usually is. This is really about us getting into pectoralis. So you can explore it, see what it's like. 
But you may find that the further up it all comes towards the right arm, the more air you can catch between your left arm and the floor. And then root your left shoulder blade into the midline. Bring your left shoulder blade into the midline. Yeah. Spread your left collarbone away from the midline. And then feel what's happening at pectoralis. And then you decide the orientation of your gaze. Looking to the left hand, looking skyward, looking to the right hand. And find what it is that really allows you to open up the place where the arm meets the body. And you'll find the way that your left leg wants to be that's most comfortable so that you can really give your awareness to where the left arm meets the body. And let that be everything. And then drop beneath the radar of effort. And just feel your way into left pectoralis. Into the grip that the trunk has on that left arm. And the shoulders are far from the ears. And the breath is deep into the shoulder as we continue to loosen the grip. When times are tough, the propensity of the body is to contract. And we just want to have these moments of releasing, moving from catabolism, effort, to anabolism, surrender. So, we have a beautiful little intro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Last little bit of really spreading open that top left quadrant of the chest in a juicy, delicious, expansive way. And then just for a moment, with that left arm fully extended, see what it's like to just let your left hand be soft and relaxed on the ground and just start to slide your left arm towards the direction of overhead towards, say, 12 o'clock and just notice where it's sticky in the shoulder, if it's sticky. And don't force anything, just stay soft and relax, and then come back down to, say, 9 o'clock, back arm straight out from the shoulder. And you're just going to slide 12 o'clock, 9 o'clock, a few times, just to move through any cobwebs. Right. Yeah, sweet. And the next time you do it, as you move in the direction of 12 o'clock, find that place between 9 and 12 that is supremely delicious. Something that says, oh yeah, please park it here for just a moment and give me some breath, give me some prana. And then get that pranic flow happening. Right. Open up the highway. So I call this opening up the left ear of the heart so that our love can flow oh so freely from the heart out through the left arm out into the world putting love into all of our offerings and then slowly coming back down to nine o'clock release at nine o'clock if your left leg is extended give it a gentle bend once again and then slowly release to center gingerly. And as you come back to center, pause for a moment and notice. And then square yourself back off on the mat if you've gone cattywampus. And take pentacle pose. Reaching out through the four corners, really lengthening, 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 pointing through your toes, reaching through your fingers, and then softening, coming back to home base, just to feel the effects of your practice thus far. Deep, compassionate breath to each and every cell of your being, draw it in. Deep, compassionate exhalation out into the world. And then release your arms straight out 
like wings and slide your legs into tabletop and then from tabletop both knees to the left as you work your way into second side and take 10,000 years feeling your way into this where do your legs want to be how can they best be so that you can get into pectoralis where the right arm meets the body what is it that really allows you to open up the place where the right arm meets the body while honoring any limitations perhaps any previous injuries or surgeries so we dance around and with them so we take our cue from the body my words are always a distant second to the wisdom within and then once you've felt your way into where the right arm meets the body then you take the orientation of the gaze that best supports that opening whether it's to the left skyward or to the right you just want to feel that right shoulder blade anchoring into the midline as well as down into your back pocket while the right collarbone spreads wide and then let go and let gravity feel where the posture meets your body and breathe into that intersection Keep the shape interesting. If your mind wanders, tinker around a little bit. Come back into sensation. Do what you need to do to continuously and perpetually have a felt sense of the shape. And let that be a call to consciousness. Okay, it's a little bit juicy. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Body, I'm giving you my full attention, the life of my breath, the breath of my life. continuously keep ourselves good company and then after you really felt that your body has let you in deeply you start to explore the movement from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock stay as soft as you can everywhere that you can and stay exceptionally curious so we move slowly to feel, okay, where in this movement do I start to lose the quality? Is there any distortion, ratcheting, jumping of the muscular tissue or the scar tissue? Keeping that right hand as low down, fingertips dragging the floor as best you can. And you do it several times to feel, to do your research of where you're most needed. And then you go there and you park it there for your last few rounds of Deer Gaswasam. That three part breathing. Using it to create space and to soften. Beautiful. Deep breath in, deeper breath out. Releasing that right arm straight back out to your side. And then if your top leg is lengthened, give it a little bend to more easily roll back to center. And feeling your way back onto your sticky mat into pinnacle pose with a little bit of effort and then releasing effort and just feeling the truth however your body's presenting in this moment remember your sankalpa your sacred intentions 
May they continue to guide your efforts. And then from here, you can slide your feet to standing so that you imprint your low back into what's beneath you. And just let your low back be soft and comforted as you take your right arm straight out to your side. So the right arm comes straight out perpendicular to the body. And the left arm can be wherever you want it to be. I find it sometimes helpful to have the left arm perpendicular to the body as well, to kind of use it to ballast. Arms out wide rim to rim, if that feels okay with your shoulders. And then take your shoulders as far from your ears as you can. Shoulder blades down, down, down. And then if your right palm isn't already skyward, move from your shoulder blade as you start to give an external rotation of your right arm bone, rolling the inner arm towards the outer. As you begin to take an external rotation, you continue to externally rotate, working your palm towards the wall behind you and your thumb towards the floor. And then continue moving from your shoulder blade as you work that external rotation as far as it will comfortably and gently go. Maybe that right palm goes all the way to the floor. Here's a little bit of a, a circus uh, freak show look. But just notice how it feels. Shoulder down, and then you decide. Do I have permission to have my arm straight out? Do I need to take it a little bit higher, a little bit lower? What allows me to find the end of the road in this external rotation without forcing anything? And then you feel your way into that arm as fully as extended as your body will allow without forcing anything and then breathe into it. This is juicy family. This is this is kind of yummy in, in a Megan yummy kind of way. Not yummy like you know a cookie or something but yummy in a wow is this creating some space and setting something free as soon as I get out of it I bet. Alright so <laughs> you're on a wing and a prayer here. Last little bit of doing this research. Deep external rotation, feeling it in the shoulder blade and the collarbone. So it's not coming from the wrist. Not coming from the elbow. And then come out as slowly as you can without hitting the quick release button. Right, Just slowly coming out. And relax that arm let it go wherever it wants to, let it do whatever it wants to. Pause and notice. And then we come in for second side. Shoulders down the body. And then that left palm begins to move from the shoulder blade in the direction of external rotation. Slowly, slowly moving from the shoulder blade finding the depth of your ability to externally rotate and then all the while feeling the shoulder down deep in the girdle yeah, yeah. and seeing hmm. what have we got here be gentle with any tendency to hyper mobilize in the joint So no matter how it looks, I, I, very, I very rarely, if ever, practice when I teach because my prayer is that the words speak the practice into your being and you interpret them in the way that your body interprets them, which is hopefully different than anybody else interprets them. So I encourage you not so much to look at the models that I use when teaching unless you get completely lost and need to get back on some kind of path of okay this somewhat resembles what she's speaking so I do my best with my words and yet I know I fall short so I have a model to back me up but please don't let them be your guide alright last few breaths and then slowly slowly Releasing the shape from the left arm. Ah. Yagada, 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 yagada. 
Let the arms do what they want to as you take a moment or two to integrate, to breathe. And then Lauren, if you want to square back up on the mat a little bit, let your upper body move towards the right. Yeah. All right, beautiful. I thought I was going to be fired. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just think the Buddha's in your way a little bit, or you're in the Buddha's way, I'm not sure. All right, shoulders away from the ears, shoulder blades down your back. We're going for the full Monty family. All right, here we go. Both arms externally rotate from the shoulder blade, from the collarbones. External rotation and see if you can get both arms. Yes, sometimes this requires the tongue's assistance. There you go. And just a few breaths, both arms into deep external rotation. If for no other reason, because you can. Breathe across the collarbones. Breathe where the collarbones meet the breastplate. Where the collarbones meet the shoulders. Mm, delicious, beloveds. Slowly release, release, release. Om Namah